The Viking tribes who lived in the 8th and 11th centuries could live peacefully and quietly, hunting, fishing, and farming. But overpopulation and lack of land for crops forced them to move in search of new territories. They became engaged in piracy, organized grandiose military campaigns, plundered civilians, and captured their enemies. Their habits, customs and traditions seem creepy and inappropriate to modern man. But such were their morals. Death worthy and unworthy. The Vikings had a peculiar attitude to the death of their countrymen. Only heroic deaths on the battlefield were respected. Those killed in battle were never left behind. But death from old age or because of an injury in the home was considered despicable. The elderly in particular suffered, and in anticipation of their demise they asked their loved ones to perform a ritual murder. They did not consider it necessary to prolong the life of the sick or the old. Such tribesmen became a burden and extra mouths to feed. They were killed, burned on a high fire, and after burning their bones were immediately consigned to the ground, writes Chukov in his work, Vikings. The History of an Era. Burial. The relatives of the deceased did not grieve about their relatives passing into the other world on the contrary, they were glad and contented. For death meant passage to paradise, to the castle of the god Odin. In one burial mound, a horse and a dog were buried with a warrior. A wife could also follow a dead man, but only if she gave her consent. If the wife chose life, then the concubine or slave girl was sent to the grave. Before she died, the girl had to visit all male relatives and render them intimate services. It was considered that the relatives were in love with the deceased only. The deceased was dressed in rich armor so that he would look his best before Odin. Attitudes to Women the Vikings had a tolerant attitude toward their women. They had an understanding that a good wife was a calm and unafraid wife. Then she would run the house, and cook deliciously, and faithfully wait for her warrior from distant raids, to give him love and affection. But this attitude did not apply to women of other nations. Even religious beliefs did not stop them. Warriors could capture nuns and turn, brides of Christ, into hostages. The Scottish nuns, when captured by the Vikings, were terrified of what would be done to them. An abbess Ebba, in order to avoid the barbarians and preserve her honor, cut her face. Other nuns did the same. The Vikings did not mess with the fanatical nuns, but set fire to the monastery, having barricaded all the exits beforehand, Gurevich's writings, the Viking Crusades, describe. Intimidation and beauty. The Vikings resorted to various tricks to frighten the enemy, not only with sharp weapons, but also with their appearance. The Vikings made curved marks on their teeth which made their grin look menacing and impressive. The mutilated teeth defined status, and served as an emblem of fortitude, defiance and utter contempt for pain. Studies of nearly 600 Viking remains showed that more than 20 of them had lines sawed into their teeth depicting a fearsome pattern, wrote anthropologist Caroline Arkini. The men of the tribe were no strangers to beauty. They liked beautiful jewelry and face painting more than women. Not all of the tools used were safe. The Vikings lined their eyes with liquids containing mineral acids. These acids ate the skin and left micro burns. The paints for makeup contained lead, and in the eyes to dilate the pupils they dropped the juice of the eye brush, which contained atropine. After such experiments, many beauties had vision problems. Tough Traditions The Vikings were fearless and ruthless. Helmets with horns, frightening grins, wild shouts that's how they marched on the enemy. But before a fight they also spurred their fury. To do so, warriors would gnaw fiercely on the edge of their shields. Legendary berserkers, who fought without armor but only with a bare skin on their shoulders, used other methods. Before battle they drank a decoction of fly agaric, prepared by sorcerers, and in battle they felt neither pain from wounds, nor fatigue. And on the psyche the decoction worked so that berserks, being in a battle trance, with special cruelty destroyed the enemy and had no mercy on him. But the Vikings had no mercy not only on their enemies, but also on their countrymen. A warrior wounded in the stomach had very little chance of getting help. They forcibly poured onion soup into the wounded man's mouth and then summoned the healers. They sniffed the stomach and if they smelled onions, they knew that the wounded man had a damaged stomach and intestines. That meant he was doomed, and there was no need to waste time treating him. And the healers of those times did not know how to deal with such wounds. Not only brave warriors, but also rogues. 
The Vikings did not shy away from deception and made profit by deceiving credulous Europeans. They established trade relations with the Eskimos and bought from them the tusks of the toothy narwhal whales, and then sold them for huge sums of money to the people of Europe. In the Middle Ages, people believed in fairy tale pony alicorns unconditionally. Scandinavians passed off whale tusks as unicorn horns. Europeans were convinced that the horn of the magical creature had healing powers, curing illnesses, and prolonging youth. And they carried their money to the deceivers, notes Budauer in the article, Everyday Life of the Vikings. Once every nine years. Once every nine years, the chief gathered representatives of all the tribes. According to tradition, nine male animals and nine warriors were to be sacrificed. Many men aspired to the altar of sacrifice, but only the most worthy received the honor. The blood of the slain was sprinkled on those who were present at the sacred act, and their bodies were hung on trees in the sacred forest. In myths, legends and films, Vikings are often represented as barbarians with noble features. They were guileless, pumped up, big men. But their violent invasions of foreign lands, seizures of territories and slaves, robberies, rapes and frauds tell a different story. Yes, they tried in the cruelest conditions of the Middle Ages to survive and settle on fertile lands. But the methods of achieving their goals were ruthless and inhumane.